Well, it's Sunday night and I'm recording again. It's a miracle. Um, just got to the truck, letting it warm up. I already did my pre-trip and getting ready to head back to Unilever to pick up a load uh, that delivers tomorrow morning in Punta Gorda uh, at Cheney Brothers. Little change of plans from the last video when I talked about another load going down to Hialeah. Um, I put a bid on this load at pretty much the same time as that other load, but for some reason they took longer to approve the bid for the load that I really wanted to Punta Gorda because it's uh, about 150 miles or so shorter than the Hialeah run and it's like 20,000 pounds lighter and it's almost the exact same amount of, of money just a little bit less so to me it just made sense it's a it's a better business decision to do an easier load for almost the same amount of money than spend more on fuel going down to Hialeah where the delivery warehouse was tiny and it would have been a nightmare to back into the dock and the one in Punta Gorda I've been there before it's a nice huge distribution center nice and easy um, so yeah that's what I did I, I uh, canceled the other one and <clears throat> accepted the load to Punta Gorda so that's what we're gonna be doing tonight um, I'll check back in and I'll uh, film anything that I think might be interesting and we'll go from there. Well, it's about 1.30 in the morning and I made it to Punta Gorda, which apparently in Spanish means fat tip. Giggity. But uh, my delivery appointment is 6 a.m. So I'm parked on a little side street next to the warehouse because they won't let you through the gate earlier than 6 a.m. Uh, uh, hopefully they can get me unloaded in a reasonable amount of time. Um, I was here not too long ago and they didn't take that long so I'm thinking probably three hours tops. Um, maybe even less because I have a pretty, a pretty light load so maybe there won't be that much to unload um, but after I get unloaded hopefully it'll be maybe I don't know 9 10 o'clock in the morning there's a pilot right down the street I'll go over there and I'll take my 10 hour break and uh, then I'll head back to Jacksonville to uh, drop off this trailer but I'm just gonna chill out here for a few hours and uh, I'll get back with you when the sun comes up. Well, uh, my appointment, well, Convoy said my appointment was for 5.30, but they always lie and say a half an hour earlier than it actually is. So I'm sure I had a six o'clock appointment. Um, it's now about eight o'clock and they just now started unloading me um, they didn't even they're supposed they usually let you check in at six o'clock is when they open the front gate I mean they said so this place doesn't even let you in the front gate until six o'clock um, and then it's just a mad dash to get to your door to get unloaded but um, tried to go up to the gate at six o'clock and they said that uh, shipping was running behind and they can't receive anything until shipping is done and out of the way so finally got through the gate at security at 7:30, and got a door right away and went inside and checked in with receiving and did all that good stuff and you know like I said it's just now a little bit a few minutes before 8 o'clock and they just now started unloading me I've only got 12 pallets so hopefully it won't take that long I should still be fine to you know as long as they're not really really slow I should still be fine to be able to make it to the pilot over across the street there and take my 10 hour break. But yeah, that's one thing I want to let everybody know that when the broker tells you your appointment is at 5.30, it's, it's six o'clock. They always lie. They think, 
I don't know if they think if they tell you the exact appointment time, you might be late or something. Like like you're a child or something. I don't know. It's stupid. But they're moving pretty fast. It feels like they've already gotten a couple of pallets off. So I think I might get out of here pretty quick. But that's the update for now. And uh, yeah, I'll check in with you later. I thought I would include a tour of the shower. Some of you may be curious how a truck stop shower looks. This one's nice, it's got a fan so it's not all warm and muggy in here. Get a little sink, get your own little private toilet. And you got a shower. I would not use that soap. I bring my own. Lord knows what's gone into that soap. <laughs> but that's it. You got our little hooks for your clothes and whatnot. And a little stool down there. But it's pretty nice. But now I'm shutting the camera off so I can get clean. Catch up with you later. All right, well, I stopped just down the street from Unilever to start this last section of the video for tonight. Just about to drop off this empty trailer. Um, I did my first little uh, custom mod there. I finally installed the uh, LED rope light in the sleeper back there. Kind of makes it nice when you're driving at night got a little bit of a uh, ambient lighting but uh at my delivery today at cheney brothers they rejected a case of mayonnaise and like three cases of seasoning packets uh they said it was the wrong items shipped which seems to happen a lot when it's Unilever shipping something to Cheney Brothers for some reason. They just can't get it right. But um, it was just four, four boxes, so they told me just get rid of it. However, there's nowhere to really pull over and have where I have access to a dumpster to throw this stuff away. So I'm taking it back to Unilever. They have a garbage can there at the at the security guard gate and when i get there i'll have to climb up into the back of the trailer trailer and grab the boxes and grab their garbage can and throw them away it would be so much easier if they would just take care of this shit. you know they can get into the trailer and either put the stuff back on their shelf and sell it to someone else or throw it away themselves it would be so much easier if they would just take care of it uh, why why the truck driver has to handle their mistakes, but oh well that's life We're about a mile and a half away from Unilever This little section of, uh, on the west side of Jacksonville, there's a bunch of warehouses over here. Um, that's pretty much all there is in this part of town, is just warehouses. They're all fairly new, and they're building a lot more, so, which is good for a truck driver because more warehouses equals more loads. Watching the uh, weather reports, looks like most of the country is freezing right now, but here in Florida it's 68 degrees and I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt, so don't hate me because you ain't me. I just wish it would stop raining. Feels like it's been raining for weeks. Cardinal Health Warehouse is brand new. 
I don't even think it's open yet. They just finished building it. And there's a big UPS facility back here behind Unilever. One thing I really like about Unilever is they have a safe haven parking area. A lot of these places, they don't want you anywhere near their facility when, you, you know, when you're taking your break or, you know, they don't want you showing up early, sticking around. Unilever, as long as you're delivering or picking up there, they'll let you spend your whole break there. They don't care. They welcome it which is really nice and more places should do the same. But unfortunately they don't. They just want you to deliver your stuff and get the hell out of there. They don't wanna bother with you. This head mount works pretty good, actually. Shows what, what I can see, you know. Gives you a bird's eye view of what I do. And here we are at Unilever. empty convoy trailer well it will be empty as if after I throw away a couple boxes Mayonnaise went flying everywhere. Some big jars of Hellman's mayonnaise. It's ridiculous that they rejected this just because the box was ripped. There was nothing wrong with the actual mayonnaise. Oh. And then this stuff was just the wrong items. If it was anything I might be able to use, I would keep it. But I'm a single guy. I could never use that much mayonnaise before it goes bad.
थैंक यू I don't think I've ever seen an orange pin before. <laughs> turn our log on to yard move which is nice because it doesn't count against my hours and I can drive all over this warehouse without going on to the drive mode Spot 174 is where I need to drop this trailer. That was weird. My fuel gauge was stuck on empty for a second. Even though there's a half a tank. But now it's normal again. Kind of strange. Got 8.5 miles per gallon on the trip back from Punta Gorda to Jacksonville, empty. Which isn't bad considering I had my truck turned up to 80 miles an hour. Well, 80 on the pedal, 75 on cruise control. So, I was driving pretty fast and still got 8.5 miles per gallon. I'll take it. I like it when they give me one of these spots, you know, the furthest down possible because there's more room to maneuver. If they give you one of those first spots, it's, it's a little tight. One seventy four. That's my spot. And whoever dropped this Crowley container would have been nice if they would have put it all the way back into the spot. It would have made putting my trailer in there much easier. But considering there's a big open area right here, it shouldn't be too difficult. When you're backing, you always want to roll your windows down so you can hear what's going on out there. Use all of your senses. I got that lined up just about perfect. Except when you hear them 
in another trailer over there and think you just hit a trailer because you hear that big crash but that was the guy on a forklift inside one of these trailers <laughs> you hear that it's like when you're backing up that's you don't want to hear a big loud crashing noise but that was somebody loading one of these trailers The one thing I really don't like about this truck with this automatic transmission, and a lot of guys just totally hate automatic transmissions, but that's because they've never driven one. Once you drive an automatic in rush hour city traffic, you'll never go back to shifting gears. It makes a huge difference at the end of the day when you're not totally physically and mentally exhausted. Now the newer ones, the newer automatic transmissions are awesome. This one being a 2015, they weren't as good back then. And the one thing I really hate about this truck is when I'm backing up, if I have the wheels if I have the wheels turned trying to back into a, a spot and there's the slightest little bit of hill even if there's not even if it's just totally flat but if the wheels are turned it does not like to back up and you really have to be perfect on the uh, accelerator pedal to find the sweet spot to get the truck to move because if you go just a little bit harder the thing will jump and you'll end up smacking into something this trailer doesn't have the air the air valve to release the tandem the pins for the tandems it's got this the old-fashioned The old fashioned handle that you gotta yank to release the pins so you can slide the tandems back. So we release the tractor brake, but keep the trailer brake pulled out, put it in drive, and move forward while your wheels stay in the same spot, and that moves them to the back of the trailer. And then you just back into the spot. And for those of you that may not know why a lot of warehouses like the the wheels on the trailer all the way to the back of the trailer it's because when the guy on the forklift when the guy on the forklift drives into the trailer the forklift and the pallet of merchandise weighs so much that if the trailer t if the trailer tires aren't all the way at the back it's uh it's unstable on the trailer and it puts a lot of stress on the on the trailer so if the if your wheels are all the way to the back of the trailer the trailer doesn't sink down when the guy on the forklift drives into the trailer if that makes sense <clears throat> You'll find a lot of warehouses want the trailer tandem, want the tandem slid all the way to the back. Some don't care and some are really picky about it. It's a good thing to do for your trailer. Anyways, it's less wear and tear on it, kind of. OK. 
Okay, there we go. A lot of times if you're getting live unloaded and you're sitting in your truck, if you move your t wheels all the way to the back, it's less bouncy inside there when the guy is loading you or unloading you. So it's a good idea to do it anyway. now we're done so we're gonna be bobtailing back to where I parked the truck so I'm going on personal conveyance and boom there we go done with this load so I will wrap the video up here and when I get home a little bit later I will upload it to YouTube thanks for watching everybody uh, please like comment and subscribe if you're not already I could use some more subscribers talk to y'all later